Welcome to the May edition of the Cannon County Chamber Connection. We welcome you back once again. We do this once a month. And um, of course, it's always uh, made possible by DTC Communications. My name is Carolyn Motley. My co-host is Keith Reddy. And I hope everyone survived the storms and you didn't have too much damage and you all are safe. I'm ready for the sunshine. I want the storms out of here. Um, we have a guest today that is here on borrowed time. <laughs> so we're gonna get right to her. And her name is Becky Murray. She's a local author and her books can be purchased at the Art Center or on Amazon. Becky, welcome to the show. And Thank we you. just want to know, I want to know, how did you get started in this? It really all started when I was working on our family genealogy. Um, then that got started into the Cannon County Cemeteries project. And then as I was working on the page for the Poorhouse Cemetery and the County Farm Cemetery, I couldn't find information on anyone who was buried in either location. So when I finally found the information, I put it into a book. And that was the first book. That's how they all got started. They all come from me looking for information on a specific topic, and when I couldn't find it, I did another book. Well, right now, you're like a historian because I have read several of these. And this one right here is my latest read, and it is called Cannon County's Haunted Hills. I love it. It is funny. It's, um, and some of these stories I had heard, uh, my husband's family was born and raised here on Short Mountain. Mm -hmm. So several of these stories I... Some of them are doozies. Yeah, <laughs> some of them I had heard. <laughs> and of course, one of them that is always notorious for being, um, having, I guess you could say ghost stories is where the Short Mountain Distillery is right now. Yes. So yeah, my, my husband had family that was kind of involved in that too. This one, Murder, moon, Moonshine, and General Mayhem. I know, yeah, that's right. In Shotgun County, great book. And that's got a lot of look. Well, all of these books, The Men of Justice, all of them have um, local people in them. Yes, every, uh, every book is about Cannon County only. Right. Mm -hmm. And of course, this big one here is the 10 o'clock scholar, and that's the history of the schools. The one that I was surprised at and I haven't read yet was the elusive iron horse, and that's about railroads that we don't have. Yes. <laughs> we never <laughs> actually managed to get one. And there's a reason for that, isn't there? Well, it, there are several different reasons. Mainly it was because every time it was started, it ended up being either voted down or because whoever had started that proposal never completed it. So it didn't complete with us or the other county that was involved in that one. Okay. Well, that's a shame because now we don't even have a bus that comes through here. It's true. <laughs> the railroad would have been a big plus. It would have, but... After these years, if we had a railroad, it would have really changed the way the county is. So some people would have liked that, and probably some people wouldn't. Yeah. Well, you probably yeah. would have had something kind of similar to what Watertown does, you know, with their train rides and stuff like that to Nashville even. Mm -hmm. So that would have been pretty cool. What, uh, you say you, you write these based on, you know, you're looking for information and stuff like this, so you get, get all other information, you write these books. What's on the docket next? What do you got coming up? Um, I actually... Just had one that's available about the Trail of Tears. It's okay. called uh, The Place Where They Cried. It's actually referring to the Cherokee word for the Trail of Tears. That one's available now on Amazon. I'm waiting for my order of it to come in. And I'm working, it's probably going to be as big or bigger than the school book, but I'm working on one about the Civil War okay. in the county. Well, lots of people here interested in Civil War as a whole, I mean, all parts of it. Uh, the Trail of Tears goes right out through um, what's known as Beaver Dam now. 
and there's been artifacts found out there and on the Houston uh, property over the years. So, mm -hmm. yeah, that's... And, and, then, and actually, through that area, then, like, the back of the square that came down followed the old highway mm -hmm. to Readable, and then it split off into two different trails. Okay. And there's a group that gets around every year, comes to Canyon County every they do. year. Right. And On Melba, bicycles, they come through. Melba actually lives in the county. Right. In Woodbury. Oh, okay. And um, she wrote it to make sure I didn't forget anything important. Well, yeah. She it was, knows. It was, it was, I really enjoyed that one. And then you are working on the cemeteries also. Yes, yes. Which I was a little hesitant about doing the article at first. I'd been asked before and I turned it down. And then I thought, well, I'm, I'm getting where leads are coming in more slowly, so let's give it a try. And now I have enough that I can't keep up with it right now. I actually right. have almost dates scheduled to go to different places. Oh, that's cool. So it's well, good. Yeah. you know, there were a lot, you and I had talked about it. Uh, there's a lot of farms now that are owned by different people that actually have cemeteries on yes. them. Yes. Maybe not big cemeteries, but... No, and the smaller ones are the ones that I'm actually more interested in because mm -hmm. the bigger ones, you, you know, know, you can go down there and, and find them easily, mm -hmm. which I try to do some of those also, but it's, it's the smaller ones where people can't really get out and just find them because it takes me a while to find them. Right. Those are the ones I'm looking for. Now, there was one, and I can't remember the name of it. I got approached by a guy a couple of years ago, and it was something to the fact of where this cemetery might have had maybe four plots in it, and it was uh, overrun by land. I mean, the trees and everything grew up around it, and it was kind of like a forgotten cemetery. I don't know if you've ever, you know, if the same guy came to you about it or not, I'm not for sure, but, but uh, Looking into it, and I can't remember what the end result of, you know, he wanted to know why it hadn't been maintained is what it was. And we couldn't find any record or anything well, on it. Most of them, the smaller ones that I find now aren't maintained. Right. You know, they don't have family here yeah, anymore. Well, that's, well, I think that's what them. this guy was, was a family member of one of the deceased in the, you know. And right. see, that's the thing. I don't know that there's any laws pertaining to the cemeteries that were used for family members way back when. You know, I don't know. Usually it's like you say, it's it's uh, the family members that take care of uh, the people oh, that are buried right. there that take care of them. And if other you run out of family members. <laughs> right. I mean, other than, you know, not destroying it, I don't, I don't know of any kind of a law that would just be that you have to maintain. to maintain. Right, right. right. See, most of your, uh, where I will be buried, will be a smaller cemetery. And right now there's a group of people who had family buried there. And they will, they every year we pitch in a little bit to have it mowed and kind of taken care of, you know. But as generations go on, I don't know if the younger generations have that interest. You know, way back when everybody on Memorial Day or whatever, everybody went to the cemeteries and took care of them. Decoration Day. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But I don't know if that's such a big thing with the younger generation anymore. I would say no. Yeah. I would say <laughs> and no. And this woman knows. <laughs> well, I, you know, the thing about you is you also work. Yes. And so now... To do all the research on these books alone has got to take you some time. I sleep very little. <laughs> very little. I've I seen her come into the courier offices and, and drag out the old couriers to use as reference too. So well, yeah. she puts in a lot of work. Back is leaned over. They don't and then offer leave you and a then come back again. Yeah, yeah. Well, they do. It's we almost adopted thing. her as an employee. You know. <laughs> It's, it's the courier office, the library. Um, I have read more Civil War books lately than I could have ever imagined me reading. But You would probably never run out of those. No, no. But it's, mean, a, really? it's actually, one reason I started this book is because it's so hard to find information to the different skirmishes that we had in the county. 
you may find one book that has a paragraph and this book has a paragraph or this one. Um, I've actually been reading the, um, the book books, War of the Rebellion, which are online. Mm -hmm. They were done in 1880, 1890. And luckily it has a, a search bar so I can go in and I can search Cannon County, Woodbury, Auburn, oh, well, Braidable, there was stuff that happened in Braidable. And then a lot of it besides the skirmishes is I think people would be amazed about the size of the troop movement that went through Woodbury and Auburn, even if it was just to get from Murfreesboro to McMinnville or to Smithville because they had headquarters in McMinnville and Smithville. So. Well, we had a house out uh, going toward, well, right there at 53, where you turned to go to Gazaway. They tore that house down and they've rebuilt the house. But I think some of the Civil War uh, soldiers and one of the big guys stayed at that house. And oh, there, I'm sure. there I'm is sure. a pamphlet in there on the Civil War trails that the Department of Tourism put out some years ago. But it doesn't give, uh, it's just more or less trails all over the state that you can go to. Well, you know? we have the, the sign as you come into town down past right. the high school for where Forrest rested. But right. Forrest was not the only one that rested there. There yeah. were multiple <laughs> a lot of generals guys and colonels there. that came back and forth that rested. I mean, he has yeah. the sign because of what he did for the town. Right. But he was definitely not the only one. A good reference for that is Bill Jennings. He's really into the Civil War. And we got a thing, and I'll have to email you when I think about it. If I can remember, I think we probably deleted the emails, but there is a new website that has come up that they sent us some stuff to see if we would use it in our paper, and it's all about Civil War. Um, in be, fact, it was, it. it was <laughs> the, whole, the first article that they wrote or they sent it to us had to deal with Coca-Cola and the uh, relevance to the Civil War with Coca-Cola. Hmm. Interesting. And they, now they did. They did do a. They did do a. Uh, one of the reasons I think why they sent it to us was their second article dealt with Cannon County and the uh, connection to the Civil War with Cannon County. So, but we couldn't do anything with it. You know, we didn't have any place in the paper for it. But uh, I mean, it's a nonprofit organization. They've got a website. I'll have to get you the website. You can take a look at it. It's Please? pretty. Yes. Pretty interesting. Absolutely. Well, I'll tell you the. The way this really came to my attention, I knew you had some books here, but um, my husband's brother lives in Indiana, and he called, and he was so excited because his daughters had bought him books that pertain to Cannon County and the moonshine. This one right here, Murder, Moonshine, and General Mayhem, and there was another one that they, they had found online and sent it to him. And so he was telling my, my husband, he goes, I'm going to send you these books and you can do this and that and the other. And when Terry got off the phone, I said, I can get you those books this afternoon. <laughs> and he said, where? And I says, at the art center. <laughs> The Art Center sells all of Becky Murray's books, I think, or she has them in there. And since then, we, we can't keep them. This one is really popular, that murder. And then uh, the other one was another one that you just came out with that the gentleman is waiting oh, for 15 copies of it. The there you go. Simple. So, uh, yeah, those I, I are... really enjoyed the reaction. And actually, the Murder Moonshine and General Mayhem in Shotgun County came just from information that I was finding as I was doing research for searching for Emily, the black yeah. history records. And I would, I actually would find articles or um, clips that I had made from the minute books. And I would be like, listen to this, you know, and I would read it to my customers at the post office, and then one of them said, you should put that in a book, because those are great. <laughs> and I was like, okay. But well, I, this I one, the, the haunted 
kale is kale. really good too. <laughs> this, uh, but I, I had I had one lady tell me she had bought the murder moonshine for her father who was in the nursing home, and that he would sit down and he had um, dementia, so he would sit down and she said like once a week he'd have his little group and he'd be like okay now listen y'all this is what this is from where I'm from and read it to him, but then by the next week. He had forgotten. Yeah, so he I would read it, read it again. Yeah. <laughs> well, most of the others probably forgot too, <laughs> forgot so it was new stuff true. to them, right? Yeah. Well, I think that's great, Mickey. Well, I just think that's so interesting. We have several authors that live in Cannon County that have written books that are for sale mm -hmm. at the Art Center, but these. I mean, you just keep coming with them because we get one in and then I see another one. Someone will come in and say, well, no, I'm looking for, and I thought, well, I don't think I've heard about that one yet. But um, yeah, you have about law enforcement, you've got about teachers and schools and um, the poor farm. The poor farm, black history, the railroad. Right. Anything the else moonshine. you missed? <laughs> there's, there's 10 or 11 total. I don't know what it no. is about moonshine that know. interests people. But they do get interested in the moonshine part of it. They do. So, they do. Hey, if it sells, okay. <laughs> That's how I look at that. But we even, we have some children's books uh, that were written locally. Um, there's, you just need to come in the art center and kind of take your pick of them because you just brought in some more of most of these. Um, but we're still waiting on that shipment that was lost. Yes, hopefully next week. And I called a man hopefully. that had 15 of those ordered <laughs> hmm. because his name was mentioned in them. <laughs> so that's all right. Well, Becky, we've really enjoyed having you on here, and we look forward to the next. You're going to run out of ideas, aren't you? The, Not yet. the history, Not yet. the Civil War should be a big one because there's a lot of Civil War buffs. And it's, I, I mm -hmm. have actually found more information than I ever dreamed of because, you know, when you hear them talk about the Civil War in Cannon County, it's nothing but, well, there was a couple of skirmishes, you know. Colonel Hutchinson was killed up here. Forrest came through, and that you know that's all you hear. But there was actually quite a bit more. So I'm I'm excited about this one. So we gotta wait for the book. And I'm almost done. Oh, Another okay. two oh, weeks, wow. maybe. Well, good deal. You, you must not sleep. I know. You work at the post office. I don't know what your hours are, but I, I don't sleep much. Well, I read a lot. And you don't even wear glasses, do you? Not unless I have to. <laughs> <laughs> Not unless I'm at Depends on how, how small the print is. <laughs> well, all right, dear. And we will have you back again. I'm looking forward to your next right. group of books because people get excited about them. So. Uh, me too. Me too. But for anybody out there, they are available on Amazon. But if you want any of these books, and they're very interesting, please come into the Art Center because we have them with the exception of one right now, but we're going to get that one too. So. I have extras ordered. All right. Very well, good. Thank you very much. Thank you. Okay. Don't forget the email. Okay. <laughs> All right. We have another guest coming, but I think what I'll do is go ahead and uh, we'll talk about the events. You know, the governor has lifted a lot of the COVID restrictions, and so uh, if you've been vaccinated, you have a lot more um, leniency to go to things, to have groups over. Uh, if you go into stores or big groups, they're still requiring masks. So, but they are lifting them more and more. And now we have another guest, but she is going to talk to you about the Art Center because they have had a very quiet year. Have you not, Beth? Very. It's been a little <laughs> over a year now. It's been like a year and This is Beth months. McQuarrie, and she is the director of the Art Center. 
And of course, you're trying to open the doors and still comply with all of the guidelines that are set down for you? We are. Um, right now, we don't have anything still going on except we have gallery, you know, showings. We have the paintings in here and we have the art in the other room. But um, we are going to do our conservatory, which is our camp, and it'll be the same where the teachers will be masked and we'll be wearing, um, the kids will be wearing masks between the classes and such, and it'll, they'll be kind of separated out. Right. Um, and we'll be sanitizing between like chairs and stuff because kids aren't vaccinated yet. So we have to be kind of careful with that. But we are trying to kind of start get back into it a little bit this summer. Um, we have, like I said, this summer camp, which is the first, the juniors are, we have two sessions of that. And the first one starts June 7th through June 18th. And the second one is June 21st through July 2nd. And those are for first through sixth graders. And they'll have acting, singing, dance, or movement classes. And there'll be a show at the end. And it'll be Fractured Fairy Tales, which is going to be its going to be really cute. Some Another teacher here wrote it. Well, it sounds interesting. <laughs> mm -hmm. There'll be a little showcase at the end. And then for the seniors, which is 7th through 12th grades, they're doing Into the Woods Junior, which is a real popular show. Mm. It's a play. But of course, this is the junior version of it. But. Um, and it'll be July 12th through July 23rd, and their showcase will be on the 24th. And, okay. And it's 175 for the junior, and if you pay before June 1st, it's 215 for the seniors. Right. For two weeks, two week camps. And they get a lot for that two weeks. They do, and the lunches, we do have free lunches for the kids. I mean, they can bring their lunch if they choose not to have it, but we do have free lunches it's through the school system. So. They're very kind of. Well, that's good, out. isn't it? I don't know that I realized that. I knew they ate. that for several years, <laughs> yeah. Well, there's Cannon County children here, so they right. feed them in the summer, and that's. Well, that's true. The program, they do. So. Mm -hmm. Okay. And then in August, we're going to try to do a concert that will probably still be very distant. It'll be August 21st and 22nd. It'll be Jason Petty. And he's been here a couple times. Yeah. He does Hank Williams. He's a big draw. He is a big draw. He's great. And it'll be a great concert. Okay, yeah, because everybody's wanting to get everybody's back into to that. Get out. We will still have the White Oak Craft Fair. Now, it is outside. We didn't have it last year, but it'll be September, I think it's 11th and 12th. I should have written it that is. down. Okay, thank you. And. <laughs> I don't have it on this schedule, but mm -hmm. yeah, I announce that every time I. But that will be get outside, so that'll be a that'll be a great thing to do this summer. Whole new Fall. thing. Mm -hmm. And the crafters are ready to the art artisans oh, and the crafters are ready mm -hmm. <laughs> to get out. <laughs> yes, we have been fortunate in that. Well, that we've been able to keep our doors open for most of the year. I mean, we were down, we were closed and shuttered for a while. But um, we've not had events, but we know in the, around Christmas, we had some artists set up in here for a Christmas bazaar and people could come in and shop. And artists are just eager to get out. And, yeah, they are. And have their work displayed and out and have booths out. Because and then they're in business no too, you know, they, mm -hmm. That's how they, they sell their money. product. <laughs> yeah, and they haven't had any outlets to no, they sell their wares, so. We've tried to keep up the galleries that way. As help. time goes on and more restrictions are yeah, are taken away, you know, and a, a lot of that will depend on the vaccination ratio throughout mm -hmm. Tennessee, you know, how many people. And now they are down to 16 and up. If you're 16 and older, you can go to the health department Without, you can go as a walk-in. Yeah. It's just the thing that you've got to remember. If you get the two dose, which is Pfizer and Moderna, you have to go back and get the second one for it to be effective. So I think one of the concerns were that people was getting the first one and then not going back and completing it. And you have to. And when you do this, then other things can open up. So there you go. Was well, there anything else you want to tell us? 
Not right now. I hope in the next couple months I'll have a lot more to tell you. Yes, I know you will. <laughs> well, I will say one thing that Beth has been good enough to do. Um, we've had some changes this year as far as for using the courthouse due to safety uh, precautions and other things. We cannot use the inside of the courthouse for events. And um, we always do our cruise ins and our car show there. So the um, May and June cruise ins, Beth was good enough. Uh, they didn't have anything that we would conflict with going on at the art center. So she was good enough to let us use uh, the art center parking lot and also their bathrooms. So we're gonna get to use the art center in June? Okay. You can also use it so in we June. Don't. Mm -hmm. Okay, good deal. Yeah, we'll be Maybe here. Even well, on my cheat sheet it says yet. cruising will be back on the square. That's why I asked. I'm a little oh, wait a minute. I'm sorry. April and May. April and May <laughs> yeah, we were going to be But you, you can. Can use it in June. I will double check the calendar, but I'm 90% sure we're okay. Because, I mean, we don't have, we yeah. still don't have anything scheduled. Just our camp, which is Monday gotcha. to Friday. Yeah. So we don't want to interfere with the farmer's market. But of course, the cruise ends are from four to seven. Mm -hmm. And so the farmer's market is usually over with by one or two o'clock anyway. But we don't want to interfere with any of theirs. But anyway, we were rained out last month. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it was amazing. So, it stayed overcast all day. And then all of a sudden, four o'clock, right, right on the on dot hit, and right we got a shower. <laughs> Yes. Well, I kept looking at it hour by hour. And of course, there were a couple of periods during the day where it looked like the sun was going to come out. Yeah. And I thought, great. I, but once you've canceled it. But also, I have to look at, we have cars that come to this from other counties. Well, if it's raining wherever you're at, those cup people aren't going to bring their cars. Or if it's, it looks so. like it's going to rain. <laughs> yeah. they, they're not going to drag cars. And then out. I certainly don't want them to holler hail because that's, I just didn't think we'd have enough to make it worth our while to do that. But we're going to try again because we do want to have them. And of course, this one that we're going to have um, in May is going, I'm ahead of myself a month here at SOAS. <laughs> get the dates of the months right. Uh, Saturday, May 22nd. And uh, we will do that at the Art Center. And of course, the cruise in is sponsored. It's presented by the Chamber of Commerce and it's sponsored by DTC Communications. Uh, it's from four till seven o'clock. Shelter Insurance, which is a new member of the Chamber, will give out water and snacks and O'Reilly's Auto Parts will provide door prizes. And of course, we always have a Cruiser of the Month award. And the one that will sponsor that for May will be the Chamber of Commerce. Each month, a different sponsor does that. And the way you win that is, it's the sponsor's choice. So, so, if so you we don't win, you question. know who to blame. <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. No, we've had, I've had people ask me that before, is how did we determine who wins that? But it is the sponsor's choice. So, Okay, let's see. What else are we looking at? Oh, my gosh. Uh, the Moonlight Drive-In. I think they are scheduled to open the 7th, 8th, and 9th. And uh, we're certainly looking forward to that. The difference will be, uh, and I don't know that this is gonna be just at their first openings or if it's gonna last all year, but there will only be one feature on each screen. The drive-in has two screens and they usually have two features on each screen, but for this opening, it will be one feature on each screen. And those features will be the Wrath of Man and Godzilla versus Kong. Now that'll be an interesting <laughs> film to see on 
big screen, the big theater screen outdoors, the Godzilla vs. Kong. Because mm -hmm. you, you know, can get it on HBO Max, you know, they're starting yeah. to mm -hmm. put those in. And I don't know if people around here can get HBO Max, but yeah, that'd be a good one. Wrath people of Man's going to be... around here can get whatever they want. I don't know. I don't know how the cable works around here. <laughs> Wrath of Man is going to be is good, is going to be a big box box hit, too. Well, I'm not sure about that, but I was looking back. Flick. We have a channel on our cable that goes back to um, 1939. I don't know. Oh wow! But there was a Godzilla movie on there, oh, yeah. and it is so funny to watch it then. And watch what they can do with those special effects now. Now, yeah, yeah. You know, because yeah. back then it was like <laughs> a stuffed animal that they made bigger and brought up out of the water. Yeah, and you know? the background was like a theater screen <laughs> to where you had the, a silhouette of a city that they're going bouncing around on and crushing right now. It's, it was, it, it, it's quite different, but people still like those. <laughs> oh, yeah. I think in this one, just from looking at the previews, I want to say they want your sympathy to go to Kong. <laughs> because I think he is the one that in this episode, he is the savior. So there you go. And that opens up on Friday night, Saturday night, and Sunday. And it will open at 714 each night. And then we have another guest, and we're going to invite her in to talk about um, the next event that we're having. Thank you, Beth. <laughs> and we have Miss Deborah Leach, and of course, she is the director of our senior center. And this year, because you couldn't have it last year, but you're going to be having good old days this year, are you not, Deborah? Yes, we are. <laughs> it is definitely happening. And it's been busy, it's, busy, busy. It starts out on Friday at 10 o'clock at Dillon Park, and the school events are from 10 until 12. Now you take it from there. What happens next? <laughs> oh my goodness. Well, uh, we kick off our stage events with our senior events because uh, May is Older Americans Month. Right. So uh, we like to highlight our seniors um, at the Senior Center. And uh, so we will kick off with, a, of course, a welcome. And then uh, we have a special guest that's going to be singing the national anthem this year. She's one of our community partners at the Senior Center, but she has a beautiful voice. And um, her name is Jody Harkham Adele. So she's going to sing the national anthem for us. And then we will um, start with some of our senior events. We're going to have a Seniors Got Talent show. Um, and then we'll have our senior Ms. Pageant. Um, but just prior to that, um, Adoration Health is going to sponsor a game of bingo. And um, our seniors have not played bingo in a year now. So oh <laughs> they're all in rehab, aren't they? So they are so excited because we've not been able to do the large group activities, and that includes uh, our bingo games. So and this they're really be, into that, aren't yes. they? Yes, <laughs> and so this will be exciting, and Adoration does a, a great job. There'll be some nice prizes. So we do want to invite our seniors to come out and play bingo on stage with us. Uh, and then after that um, starts basically our music and entertainment pageants. Um, What's on Friday? What pageants are on Friday? Well, we have our uh, Miss Senior pageant first, mm -hmm. of course our seniors, and then we'll have our Junior Miss pageant. That will be at 5 o'clock. And then we will have uh, our Miss Teen pageant at 7.30. Mm -hmm. And then bands in between. And we have um, some entertainment that is new. Um, for us, at least, okay. uh, some bands I've not heard that um, I've heard others have said are great. We have Theron Jean and the Cowboys, and um, I think like that'll be great. Of course, Beth Cooper and Tennessee Hollow Band. She's from Auburn Town, so uh, she's great local talent. And then 231 South is one of our bands that we usually have at music night. On Friday nights. Yes. Though. 
and they've not been able to come and uh, a great band um, out of Murfreesboro area and uh, they're excited to be coming and closing out on Friday night so oh, good. look forward to that and then Saturday morning we'll start all over again at about nine o'clock the baby show will start about nine. Of course, oh. registration is just before that. So we'll be there early. And I know at least one of our vendors this year, food vendors, is going to be selling breakfast. So oh, okay. people can come early and get a little something to eat as well. Well, you'll have several vendors and food vendors. Oh, my goodness. You? Yes. We, we've got um, a lot of vendors this year. It was a little bit slow start. I got a little worried in the beginning, but now they're really starting to come in and great vendors. Vendors, some craft vendors, information vendors, um, food vendors, retail vendors, kids' activities. Oh, great. And um, some of our seniors have a little um, sort of surprise up their sleeve. It should be quite entertaining. It's an alternative to a dunking booth. Oh, okay. But it's dumping a bucket oh, of water <laughs> over your head. <laughs> so you don't have to aim. Well, no, you, you do, do have to aim, but instead of <laughs> dropping into the water, it, the just bucket of water drops on you. So, uh, now, so it's just going to be water. It's not going to be like paint or anything like that, right? Okay. So no. if we have any volunteers, that would be <laughs> wonderful. Oh, so we got we no, got I everything can't. set we up. We just need volunteers <laughs> now. That's our next hurdle. Well, let's just say um, we do have uh, some volunteers, but they are recruiting other volunteers. <laughs> So, uh, well, I can't be, swim, so there's no need of me even trying. That. It should be, it should be fun. Well, you don't have to worry about swimming because no, it's just a bucket on your head. I'm just kidding. <laughs> I'm just kidding. You just have to sit in a chair. <laughs> oh me, but back to Saturday. Um, the baby show will kick off um, our Saturday morning events, and then um, our 4-H um, trash to treasure winners will be. Oh, okay. Good. Um, on stage, and then um, after that, um, the parade will come through town. And this what year, time is the parade? I've already had some people calls. ask me about that. Um, it is to start at 12 noon. Of course, it'll start from the Middle Tennessee Electric office right. building. There, um, we ask that people kind of gather though at the fairgrounds. Um, and there will be some of our committee there to kind of give instructions. But but this year. Um, we are honoring and our hometown heroes. Um, you may have read that um, um, or be reading that in the Canon Courier, um, but we're highlighting them this year and saluting them. And so we want um, all of our um, frontline hometown heroes to join the parade. Um, and then- Now that doesn't just mean <laughs> veterans type. That means like no. nurses. Yes, health department. Our, yes, all of our nursing home. workers, nursing home workers, absolutely. EMS, uh, ambulance service, fire departments, our local law enforcement, everybody. Because we really just, we know it's been a difficult year and, and everybody has really um, been involved and worked so hard. And so uh, we just wanted to be able to salute and honor them. And our veterans will uh, be the Grand Marshals, the Vietnam right. veterans. And, but uh, we want everybody involved that will. So we're excited about that, really excited about the Listen, parade. those are the people that make your community run. Mm -hmm. They are. Yeah, Your absolutely. fire department, your ambulance department, your police department. So, mm -hmm. yeah, rescue squad. I don't know of too many things that happen where the rescue squad isn't involved in, right. you know, so. Absolutely. And all your nurses and doctors and, my gosh, this has been a bad year. I mean, it's <laughs> been rough, yeah. it has. Very challenging. And then, of course, I've, I've had some calls about the dog show, so we are oh, having it this year. That's one of the major things. <laughs> <laughs> People will show off their dogs, you now they oh, will. Yes, and there's some beautiful dogs, and uh, we have um, perfectly polished and um, our local uh, Woodby Veterinary Hospital that are providing our judges this year. They will be experts. Well, good. Um, so we're excited to, to have them, and they're sponsoring the event. So 
the dog show uh, will be happening and uh, you now, can... Now, is it at the back of the courthouse or in... Yeah. We'll have it on the backstage um, and you can register um, the day of. Don't have to worry about pre-registering for that. It'll start at 2 o'clock so people can register prior to that and it'll go from about 2 to 4. Um, and then we'll have our uh, little Miss Good Old Days pageant on Saturday. That will be at 2.30. Um, and then we have the Porter Noakes band. I think DTC is pretty familiar with Nick and I his can. crew and his band. Hey, and so, I can tell you, they're great. <laughs> they're really good. So they will be performing at 4 o'clock from 4 to around 5.30. And then we have another band called the Monkey Wrench Band. Um, and they are new to uh, good old days. Um, okay. But one of the members actually does play with the Gilly Brothers for our music nights, especially Barry, and so he also plays with Monkey Wrench, so we're excited to have them. Catchy name. It is a catchy <laughs> name. Uh, classic rock is primarily what they perform. Um, then we'll have our Miss Good Old Days pageant at 7.30, and lots of beautiful contestants for that, and then to close out will be Divine Encounter. Okay. So Billy Mulder and his band and so. Billy's been playing for festivals and everything for as long as I've lived here, I do believe. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and he's uh, with uh, Pleasant View Baptist Church and so they will be performing with Divine Encounter. So I think we have a great lineup. Yes, I do too, it sounds good. Mm -hmm. And also if you come down, bring a chair <laughs> True. Uh, if you want to sit and watch these events, really, there's not much seating unless you bring it. And the other thing, we well, I'm sure Deborah would say that too, but one of the things that we bring these events on the square for is to try to help our businesses around the square. And we have some great businesses around our square. Mm -hmm. We have several antique stores. We have boutiques there. So, you know, we want you to enjoy the good old days and take in all that they have. But if you got a little time and in between pageants and music, mm -hmm. go out and visit the stores around the square because they appreciate it. And they also, I'm sure many of them help in making these things happen. Oh, they do. Um, our pageants, um, Miss Teen Pageant and the Miss Good Old Days Pageant, we give as part of their prize package a gift basket. There and you go. our local businesses around the square and throughout town um, donate items that go in those baskets. And so right. they are a big part. And we also have so many sponsors. Um, our sponsors have been amazing this year. Um, and so a lot of our local businesses um, sponsor this event. And, and we've had more sponsors this year because everybody says, we want this to continue. It's such a tradition. It is. And so they've been very generous this year and just want to say, you know, much well, appreciation that's great. to them. It is because <clears throat> our square is something you don't want to see go away. Mm -hmm. I mean, and anything you have on the square is going to help business in Cannon County somewhere. I've always said any event you have in Cannon County, as you know, people think tourism is, is not anything in Cannon County, but I'm telling you it is. When people come in here for things, whether it be at the Art Center, the good old days, they spend money somewhere. Mm -hmm. It may be at the gas station, it may be at a restaurant, your antique stores, somebody's going to make some money. If we have sporting events, uh, it's the same thing. These people come in from other counties. Most of them are going to spend money somewhere. So you want to be nice and welcome these people and help out as many of these events as you possibly can. So that's my lecture for today. <laughs> yes, support our local business. That's right. Mm -hmm. It is. I, I do believe that. And we got great restaurants um, around the, not only around the square, but throughout Cannon County. We've got Sophia's, which is right off of the square. We've got the Readable Mill. It's open on Friday, Saturday, and Sundays. 
uh, DJs, oh golly, I, and all of your fast food restaurants, mm -hmm. they are tremendous help uh, with our economy too, so we don't want to forget them. Well, is there anything else going on? You mentioned that bingo is starting up again at the Senior Center, is it not? Well, we, at the end of the month, are going to have a bingo there as well. Um, we have not gotten clearance, though, to fully reopen, and we don't know when that will be. So we still have some restrictions at the Senior Center. Uh, of course, our oversight is through the Tennessee Commission on Aging, and so we want to follow all of their guidance. So we have been open since November. Mm -hmm. um, we are open five days a week. We have exercise classes now five now, days a week. Now, do you still have to uh, reserve a time for the exercise room? We are, room? just because we're still trying to social distance, so we want to make sure that when people come, they're able to, you know, participate There's in the There's not three people on a machine. <laughs> Well, this is true, too. We don't want people overcrowded in our exercise room. Um, and then even our bingo that we're having at the end of the month, it does require reservation just, okay. just uh, so we make sure that we have enough room for everyone. Um, but hopefully all of that will, um, will end, you know, in the next few months. We're still not um, allowed to eat at the center, so it's still a curbside pickup for the frozen meals. Um, so there's still some things that we are required to do. But it is gradually. Yes, we're seeing some gradual changes and gradually being able to offer offer more. But we are open every day and anybody can, you know, come in and stop by and see us. Right. Um, um, just check your temperature. I think most of your, <laughs> your uh, restrictions will be lifted by August or September is what I'm seeing. I would say so. So, so. once again, I just keep my eye on the sports world and, mm. you know, concerts now are starting to happen a little bit more. They're starting to promote concerts in October, November, December, but the outdoor concerts, Lynchburg Music Fest is coming up in July and they've, uh, they, they've moved that up two months from last year's uh, Music Fest to Bonnaroo is mm. starting to have concerts outdoors and they're starting to use their their facility a little bit more you know jason aldean was out there the other day i guess and mm -hmm. then you've got hop springs brewery that i don't know where in the world they they have really started putting on some major concerts travis tritt was out there okay. uh last month and then right after that there was a band uh, if any rockers out there blackstone cherry mm -hmm. came out there and played and i we drove by the the place today on the way to woodbury and They've got Jimmy Allen going to be out there on Saturday. So, I mean, they Carly Pierce has been out there, so they're starting to. So, you know, you're outdoor. And the way that they ended up putting the seating arrangement, it's mm -hmm. unique because you have bars behind. Uh, you got a section, a group, like what we're, we're sitting here now. Mm -hmm. You've got a bar behind us, like a bar rack behind us to where nobody can enter or leave, you know, or whatever. And then you've got another section and the same, and that's the way they seated people at a Travis Trick concert last mm -hmm. month. So, mm -hmm. so yeah, I think you'll, we'll see, you know, August, September, mm -hmm. we'll be back to, please and if hold you go good in through, If you go to any of those places and you go through Cannon County, stop and spend some money. <laughs> <laughs> A lot of people from Cannon County about. will definitely go to these places. I mean, I, when oh, Travis I know, Trick came out, and my Facebook feed just lit up from all of Woodbury going out to that concert down in Murfreesboro, you know, so. Well, so. that's good. And I hope your event draws big crowds, because you, we last year so. was just a shutdown, mm -hmm. actually, mostly all over the county, so. May 14th and 15th, right? Yes, May 14th That's and 15th. Big dates. And are you are you still accepting vendor spots or? They are limited. I'm still getting calls, but. Um, but I had but, a call yesterday. But yes, please go ahead and call, and we will try our best to fit you in because we want as many you know things for people to enjoy and see and do as possible. Um, but uh, Friday technically is our deadline just so that we can get everything in place and set okay. up. And so um, Friday, May 7th 
deadline for pageant forms for the early bird fee and then for our vendors um, to sign up. So see, there you got mm -hmm. something for everyone. Yes. At good old days. I will be there on Friday and Saturday, but I will right. be in a booth, so. Not with water over your head, right? Bucket of water over your head? Okay, well. <laughs> I don't know. I look like a drowned we rat out there. <laughs> <laughs> oh, nobody would want to do that, I'm sure, <laughs> to me. <laughs> I'd have them lined out the road. <laughs> They'd be blocking traffic if I participated in something like that. The senior center can raise lots of money. Well, well I did care. see, um, I did see that where you were having some type of a water event. <laughs> I figured they were going to get a horse trough for the co-op and just throw you in. Oh, no, no. I think there will also be an option for maybe a pie in the face at the same oh. booth. Well, so. I think I'd rather have the water. I'm not sure. <laughs> oh, well. well, I'm diabetic, fun. so it'd have to be sugar-free. I think it's actually going to be shaving cream, so it'd be okay. Well, the idea one. to get a pie in the face is not to eat the pie after it gets knocked right. over. Right. you got to get it cleaned off. If yeah. it's going in my face, it'll probably get in my mouth, too. Well, so. yeah, that would be an advantage. That would be a reason why somebody would want a pie in the face. But other than that, that's probably the only pro of getting one smashed in your face like that now. I remember one time we had a festival out at the fairgrounds. It was so hot that day, Golly, I think it was close to 100 degrees. We had a donut eating contest between the city police and the sheriff's office. Oh, my. Well, this one young man, I think he was with Maybe he was with the sheriff's department. I can't. He, he ate two donuts and threw up. <laughs> oh no! And I told him, I says, I could do better than that. And it was so hot, though. Oh, well, the that thing that you got to think about when it gets hot like that, and, you, and you're talking about a pie in the face, <laughs> is how many insects are going to come buzzing around if you don't get we that stuff cleaned up. We didn't you know? let insects in the donuts. <laughs> oh, well, you don't. No, it's not that you don't let them in the donuts. You let them around the donuts. You have well, no. no <laughs> but you have no call on that. It's yeah. be shaving cream. So shaving, shaving cream, yeah. Cream, right, they won't get Unless it's scented. If it's scented yeah. shaving cream, then you get in trouble. Oh, but, my goodness. Yeah. We don't know where this is going. Just do, do regular Gillette shaving cream. You'll be okay. <laughs> okay, guys. If you want to have a good time. And listen, if you want a pie thrown at you, you go up and tell them and yeah. they'll put you in there. Or if you want, if it's real hot and you want a bucket of water thrown on you, you can do that. Yeah, and they may not up. even have to throw it at you. They may just go ahead and dump it on you just because. No, I, oh. it all work out, but you'll have a good time anyway. <laughs> hey, it's fun to watch the dog shows too, yeah. and the babies. Mm -hmm. Okay, Deborah, I thank you for coming on, and you're welcome to stay till we're done here. And can I have some of those? I brought these for you. <laughs> oh, it has good. our sponsors on the back, and then a schedule on the front. Oh, great. That's what I needed. All right. All right. Thank you. We're going to go on with the other events. Okay. Okay, that's the 14th and the 15th. And if you need to call the Senior Center, it's 615-563-5304. And if you have any questions or you want to be a vendor or anything else, they can tell you yes or no or maybe. Mm -hmm. So you just call out there and find out about it. Let's see, May 25th through the 30th, the Cannon County Fair will be at the fairgrounds. I don't have a whole lot of information on this. I know there will be carnival rides, vendors. Uh, I think they're going to have some pageants and music and crafts, plus much more. But if you want information on that, that contact number is 931-304-1899. June 5th is the townwide yard sale. Uh, listen, this is a fundraiser for the community for animals. And if you want to rent a booth around the square, <clears throat> 
you can, for $20, you contact Lynn's Picket Fence, and uh, she'll tell you how to go about that. If you just, that all goes to the community for animals. If you want to have one at your home, or if your church wants to have one, there's no charge for that. And I did have people ask me that if they rented a booth around the square, uh, did the things they sold have to go to the community for animals? No, the donation, the $20, goes to the community for animals. Whatever you sell is yours. But um, yeah, we expect a big crowd for this too. Also on June 5th, Gasaway Homecoming in Gasaway. It's always a big event for them every year. They'll have a ham breakfast, 6 to 10 a.m., live entertainment all day. They will also have vendors, the Fire Department Auxiliary Craft Fair, Fish supper from four to seven, and for that you need to call Karen Ashford at 615-563-4183, and she can tell you all about it. June 12th, and that is going to be Mule Day at Short Mountain Distillery. Activities from nine to two, craft event from nine to four, and the restaurant will be open from 11 to 8 p.m. And I do believe that if you want to eat in the restaurant, you will have to call for reservations. And they are also having a Mother's Day special on Sunday, uh, Mother's Day brunch. And uh, I believe that they may have some music that will be going on that day too. A great menu, so call and find out how you go about being, take your mother up there that she'll enjoy it. Um, June 26th, that will be the next date for the cruise in, and we may have it at the Art Center also. We'll see how things go before then. But our next one will be in May, and that is going to be May 22nd, four to seven at the Art Center, and all cars, trucks, unique vehicles are welcome. There is no charge for the cruisers, and there is also no charge for spectators to the, to the cruise ends. The car show in September, that's a different story. There is a fee there. We have something for everyone as events are starting to open up, and we look forward to seeing you and we peace. We might want to mention something else that's going on in May the 21st. Down at the high school, graduation. graduation. <laughs> Ceremonies oh, I are did back. Forget that. Seven o'clock uh, down at uh, Fred Schwartz Field, and it's a full graduation ceremony. DTC TV will be on hand to tape it. I uh, look forward to a big night. Uh, the, the, let's see, go back seventh uh, this week, this coming Friday is prom. prom. And then the next week after that, and that, that following Tuesday, is going to be senior awards night. So. Okay. And I've got the top 20 list, and top 20, you talk about athletes and stuff and how they're scholars, top 20, no, number one person is on the softball team this year. And I saw that, I was like a, another another top athlete, valedictorian, salutatorian, both active in, in school. So. Well, who says you can't do both? That's you right. You can't do both. <laughs> Hey, our schools have had a rough year too, and we're proud of them for what they have accomplished. And we think you should appreciate your teachers because those of you that had to stay home and teach your kids from home, sheds a whole new light on a teacher. <laughs> One other thing that we do want to give a shout out before we uh, leave, uh, shout out to Rock, uh, Woodbury Fire Chief Bob DeWinter. Uh, he suffered a massive heart attack oh. uh, last month and uh, he's been battling and uh, finally got released from the hospital. He's undergoing rehab. Came into the office the other day and he's doing really good. So uh, glad to hear that, but uh, continue well, to keep him in thoughts and prayers there. Okay, and we're out of time, and we appreciate you watching, and, um, you know, we're going to see you somewhere in Cannon County during all these events, and that's good, and we want you to stay safe, and we'll see you next month.